Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a little Freaky Fast Friday episode for you. This week we're talking about the Tube Sock Killer. Um, it is also known as the Mineral Washington Murders. Um, it's basically a suspected serial killer from Western Washington and it is currently unsolved. So, and it is cold. It was also featured on Unsolved Mysteries back in the 80s, like the original one. Um, I watched the episode. It's very retro. Gives me 80s vibes for sure. <laughs> so this first, like the first murders, so the first double murder I'm going to talk about at the time was more relevant than it is now because at the time they thought that they were connected. So this first double murder they thought was connected to the other two double murders, but now we know it's not. But I'm going to mention it anyway. Um so on March 9th, 1985, Kim- Kimberly Levine and Edward Smith, they went for a weekend trip out of town in Grant County, Washington. This is a, about central Washington, Grant County. Um, the specific place that they were probably camping was right on the border of Grant and Kittitas County near Vantage, Vantage Washington by the Columbia River. So um Edward's deceased body was found the next day, so March 10th, with his hands tied behind his back and his throat slashed in a gravel pit near the Wanapum Dam. This is a dam um, on the Columbia River near Vantage. Their car was recovered two weeks later and 10 miles from Edward's body. It contained little evidence except for a fingerprint later found to belong to the person that they knew killed them basically so like at the time in 1985 when all of these happened they were like oh maybe this is connected somehow but the first that first double murder of kimberly and edward was solved so so that wasn't the tube sock killer that killed them most likely not unless i mean i don't think this is a common theory but like i guess it's technically possible that the guy that killed kimberly and steven also kill or Kimberly and Edward also killed the other people um I don't know that that's like a prominent theory but I mean it's not technically not possible you know however the guy that killed Kimberly and Edward admitted to killing them also they had a fingerprint um Mm -hmm. and he I just feel like he could have admitted to the other ones if he wanted to Mm-hmm. like he was a truck he, he was a truck driver his name was um billy ray ballard jr um they caught him in 1989 so four years later and he confessed to those murders so it would be weird if he didn't yeah confess he confessed to, to him and yeah that's what i think like i think mm-hmm. he would have confessed to Both. the other ones yeah so august 10th 1985 um so this is like march to august what is that five months Third to eighth, yeah, five months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, August 10th, 1985, Stephen Harkins, 27, sorry, not Harkins, Harkins, Stephen Harkins, 27, and his girlfriend Ruth Cooper, 42, went for a Interesting weekend- age gap there, just, just so, putting that out. <laughs> funny, that's a big age gap, and then the other double murder, they have like a decent age gap as well, so mm, I so doubt that. Could that- be- that could be I something sort of related, that you could but... try to connect to each other. But you again, could. I think it's weird that if the guy admitted to the first set of double murders, then why wouldn't he have admitted to the other one? Yeah, truly. But I think it's like, you know how sometimes people will like have like, like so say that the murderer's mom like had an age gap with her boyfriend or whatever. He could have like related that. And so he specifically targeted people with an age gap. Like, that could be possible. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so, the so sorry. Okay. Steven and his girlfriend Ruth went for a camping trip on Tule Lake, T-U-L-E, which is in Pierce County. This is about three hours from Grant County. So, this is, like, another reason that it may not have been the same person, and it likely wasn't. Um it was pretty far. So Pierce County, uh, Tool Lake is about, it's around Yelm. So, or, and that's where they're found too, is around Yelm, Washington. 
um it'd be a lot easier to look at it on a map but i mean they're all fairly close like they're all in this like hour circle right mm -hmm. On August 14th, so this is four days after they left for a camping trip, the body of Stephen was found in a forest by a hiker in the woods of South Pierce County. Uh, Stephen was still in his sleeping bag with a gunshot wound to the head. The dog that was with them was also found killed. Just like Kimberly Levine, Ruth was not found right away. In October, skeletal remains as well as a purse were found. These remains were matched to Kimberly using dental records. The remains had a tube sock around the neck, but the cause of death was determined to be a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Both Ruth and Stephen were both, their remains were found near Yelm. So about, what is this? About four months later, on December 12th, 1985, Mike Reamer, 36, and his girlfriend Diana Robertson, 21, took their daughter Crystal, age two, from Tacoma to the Nisqually River. So the Nisqually River is about 25 minutes from Tool Lake, um, and I think about 30 minutes from Tacoma-ish. They're, like, kind of in a different direction. So, like, you go through Tool Lake to get to Nisqually, I believe. Um, they went to find a Christmas tree and to check animal traps that uh, Mike had set. Like, that was his thing, right? trapping animals later that afternoon crystal so on december 12th crystal was found walking around at a kmart in spanaway this is about 30 minutes from crystal, the daughter who's two years old she's two yeah she was like just wandering around the kmart basically crazy uh mike and diana's disappearances almost went cold um until a driver found their red plymouth truck as well as Diana's remains, in a forested area off of Washington State Route 7. Diana's cause of death was 17 stab wounds to the neck and a tube sock tied tightly around her neck in the same knot as on the one on Ruth ne Ruth's neck. So, like, it was, like, the exact same knot, basically. This time, Mike was the one not found. There was blood in the truck and a note saying, I love you, Diana, that was believed to be in Mike's handwriting. He was also known to be physically abusive, and Diana had previously gotten a restraining order against him, but as it got closer to Christmas, she dropped it, I guess, because she wanted them to be a family. So, it's interesting that, so he stabbed Diana in the neck, mm -hmm. but um, Ruth, he shot in the stomach, but the tube sock part was still important to him or her, I guess. Well, and I think they, part, but... I think the tube sock part was enough similarity in such a weird MO uh -huh. that they just assume it was the same person. I agree. And also, like, being in a similar area and then not being the same. And, yeah, like you said, a tube sock is a very specific, like, there must be something important about the tube sock for him. Mm -hmm. um, and... Also that he's murdering couples and not just a single person. Like, that could definitely be part of his M.O. Mm -hmm. um, M.O. standing for modus operandi, in case you don't watch Criminal Minds, NCIS, CSI, any of those. <laughs> Which I feel like if you're listening to a true crime podcast, you probably do. Just Honestly, as an assumption. I, I didn't know what it stood for. I just watched criminal minds over and over again so <laughs> it's modus operandi which is like basically motive. latin for like no it's like how they killed him oh so the like yeah um so mike reamer the victim well so basically mike was missing right so mm -hmm. diana was found dead crystal was found but they couldn't find mike right so they were kind of still assuming he was alive and they were like if he's alive that pretty much means he's guilty mm -hmm. you know like it's probably not a coincidence that it's unlikely that he escaped even so the weird thing is um he was eventually ruled out as a su suspect for diana's murder he was on the hook for steven and ruth's murder too like they had a warrant for his arrest but his remains were found in March 2011, and I think in some people's eyes that meant he was innocent. 
because maybe he had been dead the whole time um both so both far from when yeah. the murders took place okay interesting well so so mike and diana's remains were found near mineral washington i know where yelm is i'm not familiar with mineral but they're close they're just not the same town technically mm-hmm. however in really small towns like that like it's it'd be unlikely that this was two different people i think is what they assumed especially with the tube sock part yeah the tube sock part is so specific that i think mm-hmm. that it has to be related the only thing is if you're assuming that mike so he was ruled out as a suspect, but if you still think that he did it, it's interesting to me that he would have, if he was found in a different place, that he would have killed Diana and then gone somewhere else and, like, killed himself, probably, would be what I would think mm-hmm. they would suspect. Mm-hmm. But then why did he kill, why did he go somewhere totally different to kill himself? And why did he kill the other couple? Because that doesn't really... Well, so the like there was, they were like a little suspicious that he killed the other people. Obviously, not just because of the tube sock thing, but also because it was in an area that he was known to set animal traps. Because remember, he likes to trap animals like for a hobby. Um, mm-hmm. The so September nineteen eighty nine was when this case, which was featured on Unsolved Mysteries, um, obviously still hasn't been solved. It's technically cold now. Um, there's a lot of theories there's a lot of like there people have people that know this case usually have like a really strong opinion on it um basically it like the first theory is that billy ray ballard jr who killed kimberly and edward um was it him even though the mo's were totally different they were in they were like three hours apart they were in completely different parts of washington but Billy Ray Ballard Jr. was a truck driver, so like, like a semi truck driver. So like, I mean, it's, it's not be unusual for him. To not like totally out of the question. Person. This one doesn't seem like it's a very popular theory, though. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Well, because if the tube sock was involved in the other two murders, why wouldn't he have done it in the first one? Unless like the first murder was like kind of just a. Like, like it wasn't trial planned. End. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. just weird that it was in the same year, too. However, I know it's not totally crazy for, like, serial killers to, like, develop, like, a signature, like, a tube sock, like, later. Later. Mm-hmm. Like, I think there's probably been a couple people that, like, They're were... develops as they go. Yeah. Like, and that's a very specific thing, right? Like, I wonder if he did it once and for whatever reason he found significance in it so he decided to do it again but the first time he killed people he didn't do it or he didn't have a tube sock with him i also think they well i don't i also think they don't know where the tube sock came from like was it a victim like i don't even was it a used tube sock because then they would be able to make some sort of connection i saw i saw one of the pictures it's i mean it's not super graphic because she's face down in the picture but it was basically like comparing the two knots in the tube socks right Mm -hmm. they they look like they have like you know when you wear like a white sock and the bottom like just eventually over time even if it's clean is like brown Mm -hmm. it kind of looked like that to me so like even if it didn't have any DNA on it, I feel like it wasn't, like, unused necessarily. DNA, like, goes bad after a while, especially out in the elements. So a lot of people still believe that Mike could be a sub- a suspect, um, mostly because they can't really prove how he died based on just his skull. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I think, well, so I know that the cops, like, haven't really, like, released a s- certain information, right? And um, I think a lot of people believe because I think they only found parts of Mike's skull. So they can't tell if he like shot himself in the head because that would be like the reasonable reasonable way to commit suicide, right? Would be to shoot yourself in the head. Well, and that would explain why he'd be in the middle of the, like found in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Sorry, I've been trying to say complete suicide, not commit because that's the politically correct way to say it and it, i mean i think it's more respectful too so complete suicide so if he had completed suicide um 
there would have been like some kind of wound in the school skull right and i i don't think they, they found that. that however people that still believe mike was the suspect i think were like well that's not conclusive right mm-hmm. and i mean this the i think the biggest evidence for mike being the suspect or being the killer is that crystal was clearly driven to that kmart and span away like she couldn't right, have walked like minutes away right and she somebody was- took okay. her somebody took her there and i just i can't see somebody risking i mean she was two so it's not like she could have been she couldn't have identified the guy but like the guy or girl whatever um but like i just don't see somebody risking that in my opinion like driving her all the way to there and then likely coming back I don't know. and trying I to think personally bury Diana. I think that that is a... But he didn't bury Diana. Diana wasn't buried. Wasn't she found in the truck? No. I Well, no, no. She wasn't in the truck. She was, like, next yeah. to the truck. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable um, theory that he... So he was abusive, right? We, we know that mm-hmm. Mike was abusive. Mm-hmm. We know that he set traps in the forest. So that could explain why he killed the first two, the first couple before him Mm -hmm. um and also maybe he just couldn't bring himself to killing his own child because i doubt that he was abusive with his kid if he was she probably would have said that um diana and she didn't she said that he was abusive with her Mm -hmm. specifically so i wonder if he couldn't bring himself to do it and so he drove her out and just like left her there and then drove and was just going to go about his life and then killed himself instead because i think it's like i think it's so weird that in the first case um the 1985 one no all in 1985 sorry steven and ruth Mm -hmm. i think it's weird that they were both found like in a within a reasonable like time frame but then in the mike and diana case mike wasn't found until 2011 that's also, really, that is so, a big I mean, red flag to so me. that 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 kind of indicates to me that he didn't complete suicide like right away no yeah like oh, that's do they have a time of death no well, they relatively can't really they don't tell even from a skeleton and they don't even know how he died yeah they either. don't even they can't tell from the skull that they have i mean like it hasn't been said that he completed suicide and that's how he my died, so. my point is i just don't think that they because of the way that Ruth and Steven were killed and it was clear that they were like together, you know, everything was, you know, committed that way. I think that it doesn't make sense for them to just not have found Mike until 2011. And then I don't know. I just think that seems weird. It, to me, it sounds like later in life, you know, he was out in the woods setting animal traps and just couldn't live with himself anymore because of what he did you think that's what i mean that sounds more reasonable to me than someone else killing them he, and then they just happen to not find the body until 2011 i think that seems unreasonable also i mean it was like a remote area sorry why, no you're okay but if why? there had been killings in that area wouldn't they have looked harder to try to find mike I mean, it's true, a lot of and at the time, at the time, it would have been a whole body, so it would have been easier to find. Because mm-hmm. all they found, remains wise, was a skull. Mm-hmm. So, which indicates to me that it wasn't there the whole time. You know. Also, here's my thing that now I'm kind of coming around to think maybe it was Mike, but why would he stop? So, like, if it wasn't Mike, why would he just? stop killing after diana Mm -hmm. like it seems i mean it's possible that he first of all i mean maybe he felt like really bad about it but i doubt it i i think that he that was like his end goal no exactly which is why i'm saying if it was a serial killer and not mike then like why would he just stop after killing diana and mike it's a good question because right. he was and maybe he didn't it. stop maybe he didn't stop maybe there's that's true a bunch of missing people MO. that ended up because that's the thing like in these remote areas if they don't find the body right away animals will start eating it so mm-hmm. and then as as i mean as terrible as that sounds like as the remains diminish and like all that's left is bones like it's way harder to find that 
you so basically then, have to get you have to get somebody who's out hiking in the woods or out doing something that just stumbles upon it that's like the only way that they'll get found after that so also if they are being eaten by animals decomposing aren't found for a while you wouldn't be able to tell like if he did the tube sock thing because that's possible Mm -hmm. would make it harder for you to know and then I think the tube sock is what mostly in the area but I think the tube sock is a lot of what is linking the two so Mm -hmm. I wonder if he killed the first couple if Mike is possibly the killer I wonder if he killed Steven and Ruth because he wanted to make it look like it was a serial killer so Mm. people wouldn't suspect him well so go ahead Ab. or maybe he was practicing I don't know yeah or maybe they saw him doing something weird in the woods with the animals that he has trapped I don't know I will say uh Diana was stabbed 17 times that's a that is extremely aggressive like that 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 says to me passion you know that shows exactly to me that links it more directly towards Mike there was a note that says I love you Diana I don't know and also if it was a serial killer this brings back to the child at play serial killers clearly don't don't give a crap about anybody that's why they're killing people and so I don't he killed a dog right there was a dog that was dead which Mm -hmm. makes sense he wouldn't have killed the kid because it was his kid exactly a serial killer that's evidence yeah like he would have I think that a serial killer would have killed the kid but if it was his own blood I could see why he wouldn't the kid is the main reason that I see it not being a serial killer yeah yes because he like you said risked driving crystal 30 minutes away just so she could survive so that somebody would find her Mm -hmm. I don't know I'm starting to really really think that it was Mike but so we'll never know I mean and then there's then there's the note in the truck that says I love you Diana plus there is blood in the truck I don't get the note. So like part. I wonder I wonder if they were going out he drove them out there to find a Christmas tree and like look at his animal traps and they got in a fight so he like stabbed her to death dumped her outside the truck drove Crystal to the Kmart and then just went about his life and then maybe at another point maybe he didn't kill himself but maybe at another point he was out setting animal traps and maybe got like attacked by an animal i don't know that's not completely out of the question either i well, mean they truly can't figure out why he died because all they found was a skull a skull so like there's no partial. way really for them to yeah well I'm, I'm assuming that they so a lot of again i read like some reddit threads about this and i think a lot of people assume that it was a partial skull because otherwise they'd be able to tell if he shot himself oh. if, it, if it was the whole skull there'd be a hole in it yeah exactly so they'd be able to tell okay here is my other thing that i'm thinking of was the first murder not the very first one but the one that they think is linked is that one did it come out in the news before he before this i mean i'm killing. sure i'm sure so it could have been a copycat he could have been like oh well mike could have been like i'll do it this way to frame so i can get away with it because the it serial, like killer. It a serial killer yeah. that is Maybe. totally a possibility if it was in the news and he could have been like well i'm gonna well in this because idea of he killed her way differently in a very like passionate way mm-hmm. and he didn't do you should that have tried him. not to do that if you wanted to Again, though, right. he, it's not like he spent any time in jail. We, for all we know, he died of like natural causes in 2011. Yeah, you know, I just or think prior I, to 2011. I think that he either was trying to make it look like the serial killer did it, and that's why he did the tube, tube sock. sock. And ma- it's possible that the other killing that's related was another serial killer. So it could be three different killers. Like these three cases could be totally different if it was a copycat. Or he killed Diana, um, and then he killed Kimberly. Or not well, Kimberly. and so I will note that Ruth, um, that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ruth she, and yeah. they determined her cause of death was not strangulation. So, like, exactly, the tube sock was on their first show, and I mean, same with Diana. We, she definitely didn't die from strangulation. She got stabbed seventeen times in the neck. She was already dead. You know, so it's like an it's there for decoration. Yeah, <laughs> it's an accessory kind of. And well, and it was it. I will say it's funny that you guys automatically jump to like 
somebody getting framed because another theory is that it was a serial killer and they planted the note in the truck to frame Mike. And so basically it was either because at this point I've completely ruled out in my head that it was Billy Ray Ballard Jr., which was the person mm. that um, committed the murders of so really real, Edward. Real quick pause. The that part of the story I got from truecrimearticles.com. It's not mentioned in the Unsolved Mysteries episode. So I wonder if that was like a theory and but like maybe nobody believes that one anymore because it wasn't coming up a lot on the reddit thread i was on so yeah i mean i i'm just saying that i think that is not the case i don't think that it was billy ray ballard jr that that did the the other other ones yeah the other ones i think even though he technically could have timeline wise right yeah i feel like there's basically two schools of thought you can either believe that it was mike and he was trying to frame the serial killer or it was a serial killer and he was trying to frame mike those are basically the two theories essentially Mm -hmm, but i lean towards mike because of the the child and the fact a lot of people that's a like the main reason that and the fact that his body or his remains were not found until much much later those are my two reasons but yeah, that is the unsolved deaths of Stephen Harkins and Ruth Cooper and uh, Mike Reamer and Diana Robertson. I mean, Mike technically, we don't know if he was a victim, so <laughs> we don't know I mean, for I sure wanna, that he was even murdered. So I want to watch the unsolved mysteries of this now and see it's, if it I mean, helps it's, at all. <laughs> or it's, read, it's, read the Reddit or something. The section on it in the episode, it's on YouTube if anybody wants to look for it. Like, it's not like a super long section. It kind of just tells you, like, you know, it's, like, got those cheesy, like, reenactments, and it's right, fun. Right. It's like I a love cool, those. It was a cool, like, additive to, like, the other research I did. Like, right. it was a fun little video, you know? So. Yeah. All right. So, that's the episode on this Freaky Fast Friday for you guys. Um, you guys can check us out on Instagram at Who What Where Podcast. We'll probably post some fun pictures. You guys can DM us there. Um, leave us some requests. Uh, you can also find the video of this podcast on our YouTube at Who What Where Podcast. Um, I think there's question marks after Who What and Where, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Who question mark What question mark Where question mark Podcast. Um, so yeah, go and check us out on social media. We'd love to hear from you. And you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>